All right. So I promised I'd make this video. Um, first off, my name is Jason Stewart. I don't really do many videos like this. Um, you know, I, I do the videos where I'll, I'll make something and post it on Facebook to try to um, help out, educate, whatever. <clears throat> and I'm by no means no expert on on this stuff, VFDs, spindles. Um, I mean, a little bit about me. I'm I'm a commercial service technician, uh, HVAC service technician by trade. Uh, not really by choice it just kind of happened but uh so i've got i've got experience in, in vfds um and also i'm not i'm not an expert on them um but i've had some training and stuff on them so i'm somewhat familiar with them i mean these chinese vfds they can be kind of tricky the uh changless chang chang chinglish on them is uh, kind of hard to understand sometimes. But I, I wanted to make this video. Um, this is specific to the Onefinity CNC owners and uh, just try to help them not feel so afraid to take the leap to a VFD and a spindle. Um, it can be really beneficial and, and just nice to have their quiet um, constant torque, you know, things like that. They're just not, they're, they're meant for this application. So I am going to now, uh, I really don't have any kind of format that I'm trying to go by with this video. So it's probably going to be terrible. Uh, like I said, I don't, I don't do this. So I'm going to try to make this as informative, informative as I can and not make a fool of myself. So let me turn this thing around. If I can. Please tell me I can. Yeah, there we go. Sorry about that. All right where to begin so I guess I should really honestly kind of go into the spindle or the uh, VFD first and the wiring now yes you can see mine is on don't do this if you're a beginner don't ever go messing around in here if you're a beginner a lot of voltage in there so hopefully you can see try to get in here as close as I can hopefully come on. so You've got three input terminals right here um, for your incoming power, R, S, and T. It really doesn't matter which one of these you use. Um, let me start off by saying as well that I have the 110 volt version, 2.2 kW. So I've only just got 110 volts coming in. And I'm using the RNS just because my OCD, if you read a book, you read from left to right, so might as well go R, S. And then you do want to hook up a ground. Uh, I don't know what up, what's up with these Chinese. They uh, seem to not like grounding things, it, it appears. So please disregard my janky wiring but you'll see this ground wire right here is kind of tied in with the VFD cable uh, the shielding and the ground which go into you probably see it better from this side there's a grounding spot 
that little earth ground symbol that's right up there in that corner that's that that one with that uh, connection there with the little red red uh, I don't know why they did that either but they kind of capped it with some sort of red um, potting material or whatever and then as far as the spindle goes your spindle connections are the U, V, and W. And the thing about three phase is if your spindle is running the opposite direction, all you've got to do, power everything down, of course, and flip flop any two wires so you can put uh, what you had on U over to V and then take what you had on V and put it over on U and then the spindle will go the the opposite direction that you that it was running before very simple uh, what else so as far as um, hooking up the spindle as well these things almost never come with pin 4 grounded to anything there's nothing even connected to it so you won't it's hard for me to, to kind of position this camera around but you I actually have a little wire that comes out of the housing and uses this screw right here which screws into the spindle body I had that wire to pin 4 so this whole spindles grounded and for EMI filtering, the shielding that's in this cable is not connected to anything on this end. So you can kind of think of that shielding as sort of like a if you're at a, like if you're at an music amusement park, a water park, and you, you get on the slide and the and the the noise or in the filtering just just kind of uses this as a little little slide and goes over and just kind of drains out to the earth the earth ground that's why I don't really connect it on this end to anything all right what else just kind of winging this here guys I'm sorry guys and gals just kind of winging it so hopefully I cover everything but yeah there's not I, I took my multimeter there's actually like a ground lug down here there's a ground lug way back down here and then they have that ground lug on these these this terminal strip here I took a multimeter and checked for continuity between all these things and none of them are connected to anything so really it's almost like their their thought process of this is you know you can use these as a ground lug to kind of joint or a junction point for you to pick one of these three positions and use it as your ground for the spindle ground and the incoming power ground and your your uh, shielding drain wire so it's it kind of sucks but you just got to make do with it. Um, the communication cables, specific for the Onefinity, that's your... These two pins right there. So this blue wire is the RS-485 positive and you'll see it on the Huan Yang VFD and then the one next to it is your this uh, kind of clear cable is your uh, RS-485 negative and for the Onefinity For the Onefinity, you're going to be using pin 13, where that blue wire is connected to on the breakout board. Pin 13 is your RS-485A, or positive, 
and pin 14 up there right here is your RS 485 B or negative and if you don't remember that I really hope I can actually get in on this screen okay more than anything it's probably still gonna be hard to see Bear with me. I wonder if I can actually press this with my... No, I need my finger. Actually, I'm sorry. So we're going to scroll. We're going to go into the indicators tab right here. And this is kind of all your indicators of um, what's going on. But down here you'll see a layout of the breakout board. forgot that I can actually do this so this makes it kind of easier so you can see that pin 13 is your RS 485 a or positive and pin 14 is your RS 485 B negative those are the two pins you're going to use to hook up from the one Finity controller to the Huan Yang VFD as far as setting up the VFD we're going to go into this tab right here tool and you're going to select from the drop down menu the Huan Yang VFD there's several different ones but I can tell you that I had the YL620A and it didn't seem to work. So I know the Huan Yang VFD, I've used it before. It's worked for me. So that's what I'm using. You're also going to want to change your max spin or RPM to 24,000 RPM because that's what these spindles are rated for um, the max rpm as far as the minimum rpm or min min spin i made a little video of this posted it in the onefinity group um you can set that for something if you want you know if you don't want to accidentally program a bit to spin it 10,000 RPM But you accidentally set it for a, a thousand RPM The only problem with that is that the spindle won't ever come on and Then you might go to start a job and then just jam your bit into the material with a, a Spindle that's not even spinning. So I would probably leave that at zero honestly If it's not spinning fast enough, I think you'll know it um your VFD may not even, it, it may fault out for like over amperage or something. So I would, I would probably just leave that at zero, honestly. Now moving down. So you got your mod bus configuration. Now I'm no expert with, uh, actually I don't really know much of anything about RS-45. I guess there's kind of a lot of settings that you could potentially change if you wanted to for specific things. But as long as you follow what's on the screen, uh, make sure everything matches up, you should be fine. So you can see that the bus ID, kind of like your address is set to one. Your baud rate is set to 9600 and your parity is set to none. And then right here in the notes, it tells you all the things you need to change for the communication side of the one friendly controller to the VFD. And I will show you real quick, just going in through these settings.
So let's look at the very first setting. Make sure that your screen's flashing and that the VFD is stopped. For the sake of this video, let me go ahead and do this so nobody complains. Alright. So you're going to go into the program and the first thing that pops up is PD000. So that one says to set it to zero, which it already is. When a setting, when you change a setting, it should say end when you press set. So PD001, this is for the command source. I'm sorry. So PD001 needs to be 2, which tells it that it's going to be running on RS485. PD002 is one of the settings that needs to be set to 2 for the speed and frequency source is being provided by the Onefinity controller over RS-485 connection. The next one would be PD-163 and if you hit the, if you hit the shift button you can actually uh, go over to the next spot. So 163 <clears throat> that needs to be set to 1 because that's the Modbus ID or the address. 164 is for the baud rate. That's going to be number 1 that you set it to. And 165 is going to be number 3 for 8-bit no parity RTU mode. So those are already all set. Now, I really don't want to give out any kind of parameters for your VFD and motor specific things, but I'll go over a couple things um, because that's one of the confusions I think with some, some of this stuff is just, you know, I have a 110 volt VFD, some people have 220. It, I, I don't want to take responsibility for giving anybody some settings and then they go and use them and it's like, oh gosh, uh, something blew up, something didn't work right and uh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to give out this information and everybody use it and then, you know, you may have had a 220 volt VFD and I have a 110 and you used my settings and then something happened you know I just I don't want to take that responsibility so let's go back to let's just start all the way back to the beginning so PD 000 we already did that that was already set PD 000 through 002, those are all part of the settings that were on the, the uh, touch screen that you're supposed to change. PD003, we need to set to 400 hertz. PD004 needs to be set to 400 hertz. PD005, 400 hertz. PD006, just leave that as it is. PD007, leave that as it is. PD008, this is set for my voltage, 110 volts. If you have 220 volts, this needs to be 220 volts. PD009, don't worry about it. PD010, just leave it as it is. P11, leave it as it is. 12 is not used 13 this is for doing a master reset 14 this is your excel your your ramp up speed i have it set for one second some people say don't do that never had a problem with that i want my spindle to ramp right up If you wait too long, it'll time out and go back to this. So, 14 I have set. That's the XL speed. That's one second. 
15 is your deceleration speed, how fast you want it to uh, slow down. This one, this one you gotta play with. Personally, me, if, I, if I'm doing something and I have, you know, pardon my French, an oh shit moment, and I wanna power everything down, I want my spindle to, to stop, and I want it to stop quickly. But you can't set it too low. One second has always kind of worked for me in the past. Um, I would say safely two seconds would be good. I'm actually going to go ahead and do that. I just changed it to five seconds a little bit ago just because I was messing around. So I'm going to set it for two seconds. See, and when you when you make a change different from what was previously in there, it should it should say end. If it doesn't say that something didn't, it didn't accept that change for some reason. Um, what else is there? So you got to program the the information about your motor, the the voltage of the motor. The amperage of the motor, the number of poles of the motor, and the rotational speed of the motor. So that starts off with right here. So this, my spindle is a 110 volt spindle. I'm going to go ahead and accept that, even though it's it's already programmed. So. 142 is the amperage actually mine I think is I don't even have that set yet these are settings that need to be programmed before you even start putting power to the spindle honestly you should probably not even have the spindle connected I think mine's actually 8.5 Uh, 143 is the number of poles. It's a two-pole motor. 144 is your spindle speed. Now, this can be confusing, but it's this is all based off of a 50 hertz motor. That's why you have to, because the factory setting is 1440. It needs to be 3000 for you to get the 24,000 RPM. So. PD-144 needs to be 3,000. Um, other than that, I don't think there's any other settings really that I need to show you. Yeah, it should be, should be fine. So that's about as far as I want to go into getting into the settings because there's, there's a lot of stuff in this VFD that you don't even need. You just need to make sure that you got the stuff set up for the the communication that is displayed on the touchscreen display and then you need to set up some parameters for your motor specific to you know just the vfd the motor all that stuff you need to get those set and set those before you even hook up the dang the the spindle otherwise you could you could cause some damage oh get off my knees here I hope you guys can't hear all the cars and noise out there. I, I don't really have any other good place to do this other than right out here outside. So from this point, I think I'm just going to take this camera and go handheld at this point. So now that we have set up all these parameters and the parameters for the motor in the VFD, Let's go ahead and actually run this thing. So we're going to go to the MDI tab. Now this will, actually before I go to the MDI tab, let's go here. So this is a, this is something that's still stored in the, uh, in the controller from a job I did. See where it says parallel? No, is that blurry? No. But you'll see that it says S 
25,000 M3. That was, the, when you create G-code and you set up a bit and you put you put a, a specific RPM to that bit that you're gonna use, it's gonna automatically um, run this spindle at the speed that you set it for. So if I was able to, this thing would run at 25,000 RPM. This is when I had the Makita in the machine. So the Makita could go all the way up to 30,000. And that was, that, that number actually doesn't even really mean anything because I'm actually using the dial on the Makita to, for my speed but anyhow we'll go to the MDI tab this is where you can actually type in some some manual commands so we'll do an M3 you can drag the screen down so you can actually see S 12,000 and as soon as I hit play as soon as I hit play we got spindle and 12,000 and because the M3 command is already running you don't have to hit that again so you can just do S uh, 16,000 close enough S24,000 full speed. 24,000. And then you can hit stop or M5. And we're stopped. And we're flashing because we don't have a run command anymore. So what else is there for me to really talk about? Um, one cool thing too is, and I had to actually try for myself because I wasn't sure because I know this worked when I had a Shapoko and uh, it was actually really nice. So I have I have the touch probe hooked up and you might be wondering why now as long as you as long as you hook up the ground in here that's usually not hooked up and you have that ground tied into the same ground that is powering the, the VFD the same ground that is being shared on the uh, one Finity controller from the power cable, you will benefit from it, honestly. And of course, try this out first to make sure it actually works. You will benefit by not having to use this magnet. So let me drag this screen in the frame so you can actually see, you know, look at the probe XYZ and probe Z. So, by me touching the magnet to the, the probe, you'll see them turn green, saying that they are connected. Now, I'm going to leave this magnet hanging off to the side here. As you can see, it's kind of dangling. Whoops. And I'm going to touch this probe to the spindle body. Green. Let it go. Put it back. Let it go, put it back. You won't have to use that magnet if you make sure you ground everything. I'll try to touch it to the actual collet here. Green, let it go, touch it, green. Let it go, touch it, green. That's without using the magnet. So, I know that I have in the past forgotten that magnet before. Makes it kind of nice that you can actually uh, probe things with just having the one wire attached to the, the block. 
and not having to worry about this thing. I hope I covered everything for you guys and gals. Kind of drawing a brain fart right now. I'm just trying to think if I for, uh, forgot anything. Obviously, if you got any questions, just ask. But it's really that simple. And, you know, I can't stress enough. Use some good cable. Use something shielded. Connect your ground in there. It, it'll benefit you. It, it's safety. Use good cable. Hook up the shielding to try to prevent any kind of EMI interference. It, it's just... It'll help you in the long run. It'll be safer. Um, those of you that seen my video I posted on Facebook, you know, I highly recommend possibly changing out this connector because those, those aviation connectors that come with these things really, they suck. They really do just suck. Yeah, I think that's about it. Um... Make sure you set your stuff up for your VFD for your spindle. Like I said, I got 110 volt, 110 volt spindle. Make sure that things are set up properly for 110 volts. That's about all I got. Um, the, I'm not using the the build or the. Uh, build Botox controller anymore but I had it so I want to make this demonstration video just because I had it and set up this little board and you know things are kind of janky looking but yes you're gonna have to do some soldering um, but using this connector makes it a lot easier if you do use this connector uh, that you can get on Amazon. Um, you will have to switch this top piece out, which means you'll have to unsolder the uh, the wires that are up in here, which gives you perfect time to take a look and see what you need to do to hook up pin four, which is the ground, and figure out where to connect it to the spindle body. And it's beneficial if you get even a cheap multimeter that can do uh, continuity testing that way when you're done you can put the the one end of the the meter lead on pin four and then touch it to the body of the spindle and up in the collet and if you get the beep then you know that you've got continuity between pin four ground and the spindle body and all through the 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 uh, shielded bearings and everything all the way down to where to the bit essentially that's why you won't have to use this if you ground everything or you won't have to use the uh, the magnet if you ground everything yeah I'm just gonna go ahead and end this I, I don't know what else to uh, talk about so Hopefully I didn't go too fast. Hopefully you understand. Oh, also, if you don't have, I'll, I'll you know what, when I make this, when I post this video, I'll try to put some links in the description of some of the things, like maybe I'll put a link to this guy. But you know, this may vary from your spindle to, to the next. So it's just, I, I'll leave a link to it. I have the 1.5 kW spindle, it's air cooled. This connector worked for me, but this, I think it's Klinko, C-L-I-N-K-O or something like that, the maker of this. They have a bunch of different types of connectors, you can get them on Amazon, so just see what, what, fits, what fits yours. But, also for wiring cleanliness, I highly suggest these, you can get these little wire ferrule kits that come with a kit of different uh, wire gauge, wire ferrules, and the, and the actual crimper for it. And it just makes for nice, clean wiring. Um, 
no stray wires that could arc arc from the ground over to these these output three phase outputs and stuff so just makes for a nice clean wiring uh highly recommend them I'll, I'll try to leave a link to those two or just let you know where that what they are and you can go and search for a kit that that you like on amazon that's about it yep i'm gonna go ahead and end this now all right hope y'all learned any hope hopefully y'all learned some things and it will help you not be so afraid to take the leap on going with a <coughs> uh, VFD and a spindle. It's it's really quite simple and it makes things nicer to have a dedicated motor that can that's meant for this application with with two bearings here, two bearings there, no brushes to worry about having to replace over time. Uh, just something that is purposely built for this application all right thanks for watching and uh i really hope we all learn some stuff and don't hesitate to ask questions